Good morning. All right, what a great day. It's awesome to have snow on the ground, and uh, we missed you all last week uh, in our 840 service, but we enjoyed the snow, and I hope you enjoyed it with your family. Um, my name is Michael Blackburn. I want to welcome you to our awakening service here at First United Methodist, and we are so glad to have you here. This is the third Sunday of Advent. It's the uh, the joy Sunday, the pink candle. We get to light that in the midst of all this darkness, and we're so glad we can be here. If this is your first time here, we want to know more about you and for you to know more about us. Um, later on in the service, we're going to pass out red pads. They'll come out when the children are coming down, and um, you'll make sure you can sign in there. Uh, we've got coffee and drinks over here. Um, we also have a three-month calendar. You have a copy of it right here. Here's a copy of it right here. Um, and it goes all the way to February, all the way to Pancake Day, which you'll, you'll see there. And on the front, it's got all our upcoming events in the back, an explanation of all our ongoing programs. Um, we just hope that you can find a way to connect with us. If you're looking for a Sunday school this morning, please find me or, or Ms. Bev or someone after for yourself or your child or your youth, and we'll make sure you get all squared away. Um, well, it is a great morning. And let's all stand as, uh, as we sing. Let's sing praise.
be seated. Again, I want to welcome you to First United Methodist Church and our awakening service. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. You can see right here this afternoon we've got our service of remembrance, um, which will be a, a sort of a, a service that, that during this time of joy that if we want to, to center in on some things that we're struggling with in our lives, a time of remembering those who aren't with us or some struggles that we're having is a time that we can come together as a community and do that. We also have um, uh, this week, we have no music makers um, uh, on Wednesday, no wonderful Wednesday this week. Uh, we do have youth tonight at 5 o'clock, meet here. We're going to go Christmas caroling like we were set up to do last week. Um, we're going to drive all over and, and see some of our shut-ins, so that's what youth is doing tonight. Um, next week, uh, we're going to have our regular services in the morning. We'll have all three services in the morning. We'll have 8, 840 in here as normal um, on Christmas Eve, and then after that, We'll have um, a, a lot of stuff that you can you can participate in. Uh, we've got our children and family service at four o'clock. We'll be in the sanctuary, um, starting at five thirty to six thirty is our um, open communion, a time where you can come in and just be in a place of silence as as we have communion in there. Um, at seven o'clock, we'll have a, a traditional service in the sanctuary, and at eight thirty on Christmas Eve, for the first time, we'll have a service in here. It'll be a contemporary. Base service will be in here. Keith will give a message. We'll have communion, um, and it'll be on Christmas Eve there. We hope everyone can come and join us there. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. If, you, if you've looked around and seen all the tables, uh, we've got cookies. And I, I, I think I saw some, some people around here. Uh, I saw cookie monsters all around doing stuff. And I don't know if there's an announcement that we want to have about the, the, the cookies but or just to know. That right after the service, if you'd like to um, uh, take part and, and go through all the cookie line over there, it's a great way of um, supporting uh, the missions that uh, the Methodist women do with that. Um, I feel like I'm missing some stuff. I know things are going on. Is there anything that's, that's happening that I need to announce this morning? Awesome. Yes. Scott Taylor. <laughs> I did not say that. So at 6.30, after the service of remembrance in the sanctuary, the Asheville Symphony will be, Choir will be in the, in the sanctuary tonight. That will be a great concert there. All right. Well, there's a lot going on, and it's, it's Christmas time, uh, which brings a lot of joy, a lot of excitement. It brings a lot of anxiety and to-do list, too. And I pray that this morning, that this hour can just be a time where we can let all that go and just simply be here. Uh, let's all stand and greet one another with the peace and love of Christ. Sing this song, oh come all ye faithful. Hope everyone can use your voices this morning and sing this carol out. Oh come all ye faithful. Oh come all ye faithful. Joyful.
here. I hope this next song can be one that's more than just words on a screen, but a, a prayer from our hearts. Say, holy fire, you know, burn away my desires for everything. Saying less of me and more of you, God. This morning.
initiative. Lord, holy Lord, we come with joy to celebrate the birth of your son who rescued us from the darkness of sin by making the cross a tree of life and light. Join me with you in the responsive reading. May this tree, arrayed in splendor, remind us of the life-giving cross of Christ, that we may always rejoice in Because the needles of pine and fir trees appear not to die each season, the ancients saw them as signs of things that last forever. The prophets of the Bible tell us that there will be no end to the reign of the Messiah. Therefore, we hang wreaths of evergreens shaped in a circle which itself has no end to signify the eternal reign of Jesus the Christ. For God, For God. did not send the Son into the Hear the words of prophet Isaiah. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Sing that. And ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. We sing, rejoice. Our winging angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Christ the babe is Lord of were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning noon, saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel truth. 
morning. Now's, now's the time we go to God in prayer. We have a few um, prayer requests here with the church, and then I'll open up to everyone here for their prayer requests and their concerns. We extend our sympathy to the Ferguson family on the death of James Mark Ferguson. We also extend our sympathy to the death of um, Whitney Charlton, their daughter of Eleanor and Jack Suttoth, and the mother of Fisher Davidson Charlton. We also want to send out our prayer request for the uh, Thomas family, Mark Thomas, Rufus Thomas, and Debbie Thomas and their family. Now, if I can see, if I can open it up to anybody here, has any prayer requests or praises. Oh, one more praise, I forgot. There is another Brown. Um, Gavin and Carrie Brown on the birth of their daughter, Annabelle Hartley Brown. She was born Friday, so that's number 10, 11. <laughs> so I, I've lost count. So any other uh, prayer requests or uh, concerns or praises that we'd like to lift up today? All right, if you'll bow your heads and pray with me, please. Oh, sorry, sorry. Debbie, go ahead. Yes, please, please pray for everyone that's, that's not home this season. Anything else? If you'll bow your heads. Dear Lord, we come today in hope, peace, joy, and love. We ask that you remember these families that we've raised up. The Ferguson family, and the Charlton family, and the Thomas family, and the Brown family, and all the other unspoken prayer requests that we have today. This time, when we come to church during this time, we ring our bells. We also remember what this season is about. And we call, quiet our hearts as it was quiet that long, long, long time ago in a manger. Be with this, this day and this time as we continue to remember the reason for the season. And it is in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture lesson today is from John chapter 15. Actually, we got an Old Testament one too. Have we got the Old Testament on the, on the slides? It's okay if you don't. We have two. We have an Old Testament and a New Testament. And it's Psalm 137, 1 through 6. Make sure we don't go through verses 9 because there's children in the room. Okay, we got it. Yeah, don't go through 9. <laughs> Just saying. That'll make y'all all find your Bibles when you get home this afternoon. <laughs> okay. I wasn't planning to be funny on that one. So, uh, Psalm 137. It's lament over the destruction of Jerusalem. By the rivers of Babylon, 
There we sat down, and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. And then our gospel lesson from John chapter 15. Jesus says to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. So Jesus speaks about his joy and about our joy. And he says that if his joy is our joy, then our joy will be complete joy. And that's the candle that we light today. I couldn't remember if I've shared with you my favorite quote. I've been your pastor for over five months now, and so surely I have, since it's my favorite quote. But I didn't bother to go through old notes just to see, and I don't think uh, it would have mattered because, you know, uh, favorite quotes and great stories are, are worth uh, telling again. But Howard Thurman said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. So what makes you come alive? What makes you come alive? I, I don't know if you've ever thought about it. But I actually think that that's not a bad uh, spiritual practice. So just get your journal or something to write on and, and ask yourself that question. Um, I, I actually think about it now and again. And I come alive when I'm driving Chan to work in a snowstorm. <laughs> or, you know, that feeling um, when uh, the fish bites and then you realize that it's still on the line. Isn't that like awesome? Or when I wake up on the trail and there are still some hot coals from last night's fire and you just kind of uh, kneel beside it and you can throw uh, pine needles or, or just something, some dry kindling and you watch the, the, the smoke turn to fire. And that usually means that there's a good cup of coffee on the way. And a good cup of coffee always makes my list. I come alive when I'm out in my shed and when the, the sawdust is flying. Mostly, though, um, just being in the same room with my family. Several years ago, I was building a, a stone walkway at our house. And uh, the Terminix man uh, pulled into our driveway. And uh, he, he got out of his truck and he said, Mr. Termin? And I'm like, yeah. And we introduced ourselves. And... Uh, he told me that he was a professor at AV Tech, and he taught classes in um, ancestry and genealogy, and I'm not sure what the name of his discipline is, uh, but he said that Termin is a Scandinavian name. Now, that was interesting. I, you know, my dad has always said that Termin is a German name, 
and that it literally means doorman. And I, I've actually always thought that was kind of neat, you know? Um, like I'm a humble doorman. I'm always serving people. It's like I'm, so I'm just like Jesus, you know? Um, <laughs> but my new friend Paul, the Terminex man, said that it's Scandinavian from Thor. And I'm like, really? Thor? I'm a descendant of Thor? It was amazing. And so I'm back working on my walkway, and I pick up the hammer that I'm using to break the stones, and I kind of look at my arm, and I'm like, I can't wait to tell Chan about this. And so I tell her, all full of joy, and she just kind of shakes her head and says, you're so full of it. <laughs> and, and she's right. I, I was full of it. Uh, it. It really made me happy. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes our pursuits of happiness are really shallow and fleeting. And that's a problem when we pursue stuff without depth because the ice melts and the coffee gets cold and you know life has a way sometimes of, of falling apart and when the darkness comes in um, sometimes the joy disintegrates and, and goes with it in, in the psalm that we read it, it's a lament. They're sad because Jerusalem has been destroyed. Babylon has destroyed Jerusalem. And so uh, it's actually a song, but, but in this song, they're, they're singing about not singing. They've, they've hung their, their harps or their lyres on the willow tree. And yet their, their captors are demanding songs from them. Sing us the songs of Zion and and. Their question, I think, is a question that oftentimes we have. You know, how can we sing the Lord's songs in, in a foreign land? How can we uh, be full of joy in joyless times? I, I stopped at verse 6 because what they're full of is anger. And what they're full of is revenge. And, and the next few verses are verses that sing about happiness because of that revenge. Do you know Jesus says that if our joy is his joy, then our joy will be complete joy. And I think it's really important to note that when Jesus said this, he was on his way to the cross. He was just a few hours away from his friends not only betraying him, but deserting him and to all kinds of, of suffering and pain and death. But Jesus talks about, about his joy. He says, my joy. And, and so I was wondering about that. What is Jesus thinking when uh, Jesus talks about his joy? Like, what is it that makes God's heart come alive? Well, in, in Zephaniah, I know you're uh, familiar with, with Zephaniah. It's um, right between Habakkuk and Haggai. <laughs> Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 says, The Lord your God is in your midst. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. We used to, uh, to sing a song from this verse in our contemporary worship. And uh, you know, just, just singing about uh, how God rejoices over us. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. And there was just joy, 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 joy all in this song. That I am God's joy. God delights over me. And I actually... Um, for the sake of time, just cut out several other passages of Scripture that we could turn to. Like the, the, the biblical witness in so many places reveals God's heart. And what's in the center of God's heart is us. It, it's me and, and it's you. 
God rejoices in us. And so next weekend, next Sunday is Christmas Eve, and, and we've got a lot of services in this place. And one of the things that we'll, that we'll do uh, at, at one or more points in that day, maybe you do this in your own home, is we rehearse the Christmas story and we, and we read Luke 2. And I think my favorite version is Linus's version in Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, but it's the, the Luke 2 angels. You know, they, they, they appear to the shepherds in, in the field. And, and they say, you know, don't be afraid. We, we bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in the, the city of David a Savior. A Savior is born. Now, we know something that the shepherds didn't know, that our salvation would come through pain and it would come through suffering. So Jesus says that if my joy is your joy, then your joy will be complete. It'll be full. It'll be all that it can be and it'll, it'll be all that it needs to be. And he says that that joy comes by our keeping God's commandments. If you keep my commandments, this is what's going to happen. And and so, I mean, what are those commandments? Jesus tells us in in the verses that we read, but you remember the time that the lawyer comes to him and says, what's the greatest commandment in the law? Of all the commandments, what floats to the top? And it was a very familiar thing for those listening to him, and it's probably familiar to us too. Jesus says the great commandment, commandment is to love God deeply with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your strength. And and there's another one that's exactly like it, and that's to love each other in that same way. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is my commandment, Jesus said in verse 12, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so we think for just a moment about how Jesus has loved us and that we're supposed to reciprocate that in all the ways that we relate to each other, to our neighbor. It's what love looks like. So uh, Scott, who just sang with Catherine a lovely song, um, as we were talking about this this week, he he gave me this book. It's called The Prophet, and it's... uh, uh, I had never heard of it before, and I should have. It's, uh, it's an old book, and it's a, it's a global bestseller, and uh, it's written by Cahil Gibran is his name, and he's a Lebanese Christian. And he says, there are those who give with joy, and that joy is their reward. And there are those who give with pain, and that pain is their baptism. And there are those who give and know not pain in giving, nor do they seek joy, nor give with mindfulness of virtue. They give as in yonder valley, the myrtle breathes its fragrance into space. Through the hands of such as these, God speaks, and from behind their eyes, he smiles upon the earth. I asked my wife, Chan, about all this. And she says, I think joy comes when God's peace is is deep, deep down in your soul. Maybe you know the the story of Horatio Spafford. Horatio Spafford was a a successful attorney in Chicago. Uh, He uh, was the father of four daughters, and he was a Presbyterian. He was a good Presbyterian. And he supported evangelical leaders of his day like D.L. Moody and and, uh, Ira Sankey. um, He experienced a series of calamities in his life, beginning with the great Chicago fire in 1871, which wiped out all of his family's extensive real estate investments. Well... Uh, Mr. Moody and his music associate, Ira Ira Sankey, had planned this evangelistic crusade in England. So they were leaving to go to to Great Britain. And Horatio Spafford decided to lift his family spirits that they would take a family vacation in Europe. And then while they were there, uh, as was his custom, he could help with these um, evangelical services. Well, um, he got delayed. 
uh, and was detained on urgent business, but he decided that he would go ahead and, and send his family over on the ship and that he would uh, join them soon. Halfway across the Atlantic, their ship was struck by an English vessel and it sank in 12 seconds. And all four of his daughters were among the 226 who drowned. And somehow, miraculously, his wife was among the few that were saved. And so Horatio Spafford stood hour upon hour on the deck of the ship that was carrying him to, to rejoin his sorrowing wife in Cardiff, Wales. When the ship had passed the uh, approximate place where his precious daughters had drowned, that's when the words of this song came. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And I've always wondered about this story and wondered, how, how was he able to do that? And I believe it's because he was so full of it. And his fullness ran deep. In this conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples, uh, before the part that we read, he talks about the vine and the branches. And he says, abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. And I think maybe sometimes in our own lives we, we wonder, with all that's swirling around us, how, how can we have it? And I think it's important to know that we can't bring it. God brings it. So uh, even if the mood and the melody are dark, we light candles because joy is available. And in this season of Advent, we know that joy is coming. And my prayer is that we'll all be full of it. Let us pray together. God, we thank you for an opportunity to be in this place. Where even though the, the days that we have lived this week, approaching today, have been full of lots of stuff that get us down, that discourage us, that frighten us, that shame us, that in this place, we are reminded that you chose us, that your love for us is a deep love. In this place, we find ourselves connected to you and so full of you that our lives are marked by hope and peace and joy. And we just praise you for that. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, it's our joy to welcome a lot of new members into our family, our church family. So if you all would come on up, um, start introducing you to all of them. And we will have three baptisms this morning. And if your shepherds are here, then that's great. If you all would like to come and stand with them. We'll have the Smiths here. And then um, just find a spot, everybody. If you all want to come over this way. No, you're good. You're good. Okay, you all stand right here. You all know what this means. All right. Well, these are the new people joining our church. And here we go. Um, so this is Dwight and Anna Mooney, Mooney and their sons, Ryan and Adam. And they are transferring their membership from... Um, the Lutheran Church of the Redeemer in Wilmington Island, 
Georgia. And these are, this is the Smith family, Rob and Jen and their four kids. And the three youngest will be baptized today and we celebrate with them. Um, their names are Josh, Harvest, Hadassah, and Nehemiah. And then we have the Goldens, who've been with us for a long time, and they're joining our church officially today. And we have Joyce and, let's see, there we go, Joyce and Paul and Eleanor and Claire. And they are transferring their membership from Hazelwood Baptist. I'm going to move around. The Haynes. Jeff's been a member for a long, long time. Angie's joining today. Kendall Connor is her daughter, and she will be joining as well. And so we welcome them. She is transferring her membership from Riverside Baptist Church. And this is the Mashburn family, Alex and Avery, and their parents, Rebecca and Jay. And they're transferring their membership from Allen's Creek Baptist. So we celebrate, and then Morgans are their shepherds. So we celebrate with all of them this morning. So we will begin our liturgy together with the Smith family. If you all would come forward, we'll do our baptisms first, which will be really fun. Turn that way so everybody can see your faces. Thank you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. And this morning we bring before you Harvest, Nehemiah, and Hadassah for baptism. So, you three, I ask you these questions. On behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Please say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace? And promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people of all ages, nations, and races. And so say, I do. All right, thank you. You can face everybody. And so we ask um, you all, will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by te their teaching, your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. If so, please say, I will. All right, and we also ask the whole congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these with a communion of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust. And, oops. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He had ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his work to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Hadassah, Olivia, Ann Smith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Nehemiah, Josiah, Benjamin Smith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Harvest Olivia Isabella Smith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's applaud for them. And I told them that we would use lots of water <laughs> because that matters. Because the water not only symbolizes that we are now a part of God's family, uh, but that God cleanses us and, and washes away sin. And you know, if you're under the water and, you're, and you stay under the water, it's not good. <laughs> we come out of the water and we breathe in the new life that Christ gives and it's resurrection life that we that we hope for and cling to and that we're all now a part of. Uh, so welcome into the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sisters and brothers in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit in God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. And so now all of you have a couple questions for you. As members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. Members of the household of God, I, recommend, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. 
the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. And Angie Connard, with, excuse me, Angie Haynes, my bad, would like to say something as she has joined the church. Good morning. I realize that it's not customary for to stand up here and say something as you're joining the church, but I asked for that opportunity because I wanted to share the joy that's in my heart this morning, the joy of being a part of this church family. Um, I am moving my membership from a church that's the only thing I've ever known. Uh, my mother carried me to church before I was born. And you've probably heard that old saying, I have a drug problem. I've been drugged to church my whole life. Well, that was me. <laughs> so I wanted to say and share with you how grateful I am to be here and to feel the home in my heart. Um, Jeff and I had many conversations. I talked with Becky a few times. I've talked with Pastor Keith a few times. I took a class with Donna Gaither. And if you ever get a chance to take one of her classes, do that. I had lots of questions. Not only was I joining another body of believers, but I was changing denominations. And I really didn't know what all that meant. So I had lots of questions. But in that, I learned that we're all the family of God. And we're all worshiping the one living true God that has saved us and gave us a place in eternity. So this morning, I wanted you to know how thankful and gracious I am for you and for the love that I have felt here. Um, Kendall is my daughter. She is our daughter, excuse me, is sitting there. And she didn't want to come up here this morning, but that's okay. But what I want you to know is... Um, Kendall has autism, which we have learned to live with and have found it to be a joy as well. But not only did you accept us, but she had to accept you, and she did that. So I want to say thank you. Um, I am so glad to be here, but I also wanted to say Jane Sutton was our shepherd. And not long after we found that out... Uh, did God take care from us? But I've thought about her many times, and I want you to know that she was so excited about being our shepherd, and that gave me joy as well. But I am thinking of her this morning, and I want you to think of her as well. But thank you. I love you. And if you need myself or Jeff for any reason, you come. We'll talk to you. We'll sit on the porch with you. Anybody that saw our porch, we'll sit on the porch with you. But we're here, and I just thank you very much. So welcome, and thank you. And we're going to, y'all can go back to your seats and, uh, and maybe hang around. I, I, I don't know that I've been here when this many folks have joined, but if y'all can just be uh, around so folks can welcome you and, uh, and greet you at the end of the service. Let's stand um, and sing. Sing with joy in our heart this morning.
Thank you all for coming today. I hope you're like me and your spirits have been lifted and filled with joy. Uh, so go uh, with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. God bless you and have an awesome day.